<laughs> good start. So good start. It's happening again. Oh yes, it's what is, happening again. It's is time it, is this for our sixth one. It's uh, our sixth it? live live stream Woo! about comics and stuff. Uh, we're gonna do a little history. We're gonna show and tell. Some show and sell. Um, we're all about uh, tonight the DC portion of the Silver Age. We're gonna take Marvel on next week by itself because there's just too much to talk about in both cases. So, DC Silver Age. All um, things. Yes. As we know, you know, when we last left off, we have, uh, you know, the, the, the Disney is selling like hotcakes. The, uh, uh, what am I trying to think of? The Walter Lance characters and the, um, you know, general, in general, funny animal kind of stuff is selling strong. Uh, Harvey gets into the act and they create Richie Rich. Uh, little Wada, um, Casper the Friendly Ghost, people that are still Lulu, world famous now. Like yeah, exactly. Well, Little Lulu is Dell actually. Oh, um, and all of the you know all the Dell characters, the four color lines uh, going strong. Uh, but you know, people started. We talked about it going darker. They were looking for uh, comics more for adult interest, and you know things were. Ah uh, yes, the horror books and stuff. Well, yeah, but also a little bit more adult, more mature stories uh, with a little more edge to them. There were only three superhero titles still surviving in the entire comic world of any note. Uh, Wonder Woman that had their own books. Wonder Woman, uh, Superman, and Johnny Batman. Johnny says good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Still had I'm their glad books. You did that. I was about to and uh, don't let me bust out my Hitchcock. Um, they had their uh, still had their books, but they were getting stale. I mean, they were running out of ideas. Uh, they needed some fresh life. So it was about time to introduce some superheroes again, um, because it was kind of like a cycle, a little backlash from the uh, censorship. Comic books, are, comic books are bad. No, maybe we can just. Like usual in American culture, all one way, then all the other way, an overreaction. They figured out, oh, middle ground, let's bring some superheroes back. First one that came out, late, uh, late 1956, um, the Silver Age Flash, which is this dude right here. And you're very familiar with him, Barry Allen. There have been several Flash since, and a whole Flash universe. Um, but this is the first one in terms of bringing back the Golden Age idea, char character idea, but a whole new origin, whole new power set. And uh, he started in a book called Showcase, which was an anthology series DC did, where every month he had something different. And I think I mentioned once before, the issue right before this featured firefighters. Okay, so it was real yeah. life heroes and, you know, all kinds of things. But once they introduced The Flash, it uh, was so popular immediately, they introduced a quick succession of characters that were based on the Golden Age characters, but with a twist. So they brought back Green Lantern, a new Green Lantern, new power set, new source of power. Mm -hmm. um, you can see him here, Flash's guest starring in that book later on. Um, his sales started lagging towards the end of the Silver Age, and uh, around, 19, uh, around 1970, a uh, new artist, new writer was brought in to revamp it as Green Lantern, Green Arrow, and that team totally changed everything because they were taking on social issues and so on and so forth. Uh, the Bronze Age in particular that we'll get to um, was big on gritty, real-life stories. Um, they were just getting there now. They're getting their feet back in the uh, wet on the superheroes. Right. They brought back Hawkman, the Atom, um, in a new format. Uh, Hawkman was in a book called The Brave and the Bold. You've probably never seen any of these before. This is this is called a gray tone cover. It's a gorgeous cover. It was a special shading technique they had to make everything a little more 3D, um, more pop. But uh, Hawkman started in The Brave and the Bold. He was in uh, Mystery in Space. Didn't Hawkman for a few also start taking over Flash books as well? Well, in the Golden Age book, uh, Hawkman was more popular than The Flash in the comic called The Flash, but the the comic book uh, Flash Comics was not named after just that character. Right. It was just it was just a title like Wiz Comics. Um, um, originally had was called Flash Comics before right. it was called Wiz Comics with Captain Marvel. But um, Golden Age Hawkman, Golden Age. Let's see. Uh, he came back in a new package. We have. Let me see if I can find you. Where did I put him? I don't see him yet. Oh, there was somewhere. Oh, okay, well, we'll see him in a minute. Uh, the Atom, basically, same kind of idea, Golden Age Heroes with a twist. And those became so popular, we're talking 1956, 57, 58, that they thought, all right, in Showcase, in Brave and the Bold, 
maybe we'll put them all together and make a super team because that seemed to work when they had uh, you know the, the All Star Comics and the Justice Society and things like that. Mm-hmm. So they put them all together for the first time in Justice League, Justice League of America. That's what they called it in the Brave and the Bold number twenty eight, uh, which is the issue just before this one. John Young asks, "Are those from our collection or from the store?" These are mine. These are gems, um, but yes. um, we have had almost all of the books I'm going to show tonight in our hands, or still do, um, over the last two years. So they can be found, the super and they're snapped up. They're absolutely snapped up when uh, people find them because um, when we find them because of people realizing what they are. It's like a time capsule. Um, Justice League of America. Um, that's the second appearance. But basically, let's take all the heroes that were popular in the reboot, put them all together in a team, they'd face adventures together. Now, for those of you who are really sharp in knowing about detective comics, the Martian Manhunter existed a year before the Flash or ever was created. However, he was just another detective at that point because they had, you know, a million spins on the detective the detective genre, but he wasn't super powered necessarily, and a superhero. He was more of a detective. He was more of a detective. John Johns. I guess that that explains the name. Yeah, uh, the, the Martian Manhunter. He was a detective, kind of bounty hunter, but not necessarily a superhero until he joined with the Justice League, and then suddenly they explored his power set more, and he was able to do heroic things. Pretty um, sweet. And his power set grew over the years, too. But um, even though he existed first, he was technically the first superhero, they don't consider it that. The Martian um, Manhunter was the first? Mar- the mar- this first Silver Age, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's the usually uh, the launching off point is usually the Flash showcase number four, 1956. Gotcha. Um, and everybody came along with it. Now, in your showcase, you also had a reintroduction of the Golden Age characters because that worked uh, back then. Let's bring them back together. But obviously, these are not you know happening now because this was back then. Uh, these are stories about uh, maybe they're, they're retired and they're coming out of retirement, but they don't necessarily exist in the same universe right, right. as the Justice League now, because it's now you know it's now the early '60s. Well, until Justice that, League number twenty-one, I would this is this one up, folks. a key for a number of reasons. Number one, it is the very first time that the Justice League and Justice Society meet, because it's the first time they introduce the concept of an Earth to a parallel Earth. And immediately their entire universe of characters alone can double. So all that's in the same first issue. This is the second part of the story, the very next issue. So you've got your Golden Age and your Silver Age counterparts. They look gorgeous. Fighting together, learning about each other's powers to try to get out of this uh, cosmic uh, issue that the world, both worlds, both parallel worlds are facing. And it started a tradition that lasted almost 20 years of JLA, JSA team ups each summer where they would have two to four issue storylines where they needed each other's help. They went to each other's worlds. Occasionally they switched team members. Um, then you had things like the, uh, uh, the Marvel family that would get involved or the Seven Soldiers of Victory or other types of team ups, uh, other teams from uh, back in the day. Um, other people from the uh, Silver Age, uh, gold, from the I should say the Golden Age that came back, the reintroduction of Wildcat, Black Canary, Starman, and all these characters that were back uh, in the uh, All Star Comics days came back in Brave and the Bold and um, Showcase, and Brave uh, Brave and the Bold eventually became what Marvel Team Up did for Marvel. Marvel Team Up was a Spider-Man uh, title with guest stars each month. The Super cool. Brave and the Bold became a Batman guest star title. Uh, he took it over eventually, but not exclusively until the late '60s. It was all kinds of mashups until then, and then it became kind of his title in the '60s at a certain point. And we st- we have some of those as well. Yes, we have some Brave yep. and the Bold. Um, showcase and Brave and the Bold are not easy finds because people love them and they grab them as soon as they come. I mean, they look a particular great. showcase. They, they um, look just amazing. The art, there was a DC school of art. Everything looked kind of the same uh, because Gil Kane and uh, Murphy Anderson and these folks, uh, Canninger, uh, who was the writer, uh, writer um, 
they Sikowski, they all were kind of drawing in the same kind of school, same kind of presentation. The big thing about the Silver Age, which we're talking, say, 56 to 70, and there's reasons we can argue about why it should or shouldn't end in 1970, but we'll get to that. Um, the Silver Age had an emphasis on science. So when you had uh, Dr. Fate, the Spectre, all of these folks, back then their powers, you know, Green Lantern, their powers had magic base or mysticism. And now there's more science because of the science fiction influence in the 50s. you got more science-based heroes. I would still say that Dr. Fate is very much oh, absolutely. mysticism. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of the, a lot well of the other heroes in Marvel. Marvel. A lot of the other heroes, though, explored all kinds of chemistry, space travel, all of these things that were scientific, and you could actually learn from comic books in the uh, Silver Age. still can. Yes, but this was the first time that they had uh, science with meat in it, in uh, in a lot of cases, in uh, right across the board of the titles. You still had your funny animals, you still had your love stories, you still had your westerns, but the superheroes made a surge, increased comic sales again. I like it. And we were off to the races until about 1970. 1970 was uh, another cyclical kind of shift in the culture and all that. We were having uh, uh, social uh, discussions, battles about what we did and did not want to be involved in in other places in the world and what's right at home socially, physically, moral, and gray area. Well, we were facing different times and they explored that in the comics and things were getting edgier more real world stories uh, about uh, people in the street your average guy um we will find next week that in 1961 marvel took advantage of that right away by making heroes that felt like an average person and identi- the average person could identify with. They had real world problems. I think I know a couple of them who yeah. we're talking and about. These guys here in DC World, um, they had real world problems, but it was all more. It was it was more, it was much less prominent. We had uh, heroes that would save the day, and it was the the focus was on the hero, not necessarily the alter ego. Uh, Marvel went the other way. They were uh, they were looking at the uh, the hero as a person. As a human being without the costume. And that's the thing. Um, to, to make you feel for that alter ego and make you fear for that that character safety. Because in some cases, um, the alter ego is an, almost an entirely separate uh, right. entity. Right. Uh, I mean, I know we're going to get more into that next. And each other's lives affected the other. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many times can we them. talk about how, much, how many times Spider-Man has kind of... Right, messed himself and, over. And Marvel or, did an or Batman, infinitely you know. better job of exploring those kinds of characters than DC did all through the Silver Age. Um, they had a different focus. Uh, we focus on DC tonight because they were the ones that started the superhero round two off and kicked this into gear. Um, some of the most iconic heroes of all time were created by another company, but the distinguished competition, as Marvel would call them, started all the superheroes back up 56, 57, into, say, 1960, the reintroduction of the Justice League for as a super team, that kind of thing. Um, around 1970, you had Conan and sword and, sword and sorcery type titles. Um, you had changes of uh, creative teams in terms of artists and writers in a new direction with more like street level uh, identifiable heroes, um, that identifiable with the average person and that kind of thing. It was a, there was a change. Um, a lot of new characters were created in that er- area too, uh, switching into the, the Bronze Age. So mm-hmm. there are some people who would say that the Silver Age ends going for 12 to 15 cent comics, but most people kind of peg it at 1970 because of the the titles and the uh, the subject matter change in that era, right. and also that it ties directly in with the culture we were living in, what was going on in our world from say '67 right. to 1970, uh, personal upheaval about what our country would be and. Um, <laughs> there are parallels to now uh, for a lot of people about what should we do, what shouldn't be allowed, and you know, soul searching. Um, if comics have gotten too dark these days, um, they were it was first explored with here in the Silver Age. Nice. Didn't get deeper into it until the Bronze, but this is this is where it started. Now, by the way, you may have heard of a, a group called the uh, Challengers of the Unknown. Again, a science fiction group. Purple suits, space explorers, a team of four, one woman, three guys. Oh yeah, Jack Kirby was part of that. And then when he went to DC, hmm. 
What do you mean? Hmm. Vice versa. Uh, well, when he he see the thing is he flipped back and forth. He did. He was in timely when he created Captain uh, America. Hmm. Uh, he did things for Atlas and other companies when the fifties had comics tanking. Uh, but he did DC work in the sixties and late fifties, mm -hmm. and then he went back to Marvel, and that's where everybody knows him from today. And they go back to search his earlier work, but uh, in terms of the folks alive today to see the comic books that he did, um, it's the the sixties was Jack Kirby's decade. Nice. Uh, and then he went back to DC again in the Bronze Age. So oh, he I'm worked aware. for everybody. Oh, I'm aware. He was very quick, very prolific. And his 100th birthday is coming up. We will do something about that in the future coming up. Too. But speaking of things to feature. Ooh, things to feature. What you, what you got here? So what do I got here? Today I've got some fun stuff. Uh, well, I always have fun stuff. I mean, I'm the gremlin. It's kind of what I do. Yeah. So Comic this book. first one that we're going to show you is a variant cover. Uh, you had lately talked about variant covers, um, but this one is an Aquaman variant. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's the Free Willy Aquaman variant. Uh, if you have a chance to look at this... Thank you, Carter. Carter's like, Free Willy! <laughs> Carter, Carter knows exactly how much I push this book. Uh, this is actually uh, the Terry Grant uh, pick of the uh, month at this point. There you go. Uh, Terry wholeheartedly supports this book. Uh, now we have an entire row of these on the wall. We do. That are, that are actually poster homages. We need and, to read you know, them. You've got here a man who breathes underwater, a three ton killer whale, a friendship you could never imagine, an adventure you'll never forget. How far would you swim for a friend? Oh my, look at that. It's a trailer ready, waiting to happen. About that far. <laughs> so what else, what, what we have here, do you think they're ready for these ones? Oh boy, I don't know, because, you know, we were just talking about Parallelers. Well, here's where that's all destroyed. But it's iconic, it's classic, it's kind of comic history for anybody who likes DC. They almost need to own a set of these. They do. Prices. Let me see if I earth. can fit these. All I, 12. I think we got most of them. This is a complete That's all 12, actually. 12 book set. Gorgeous. I mean, if we go through some of our covers here, uh, we just have beautiful ones. I'm trying to remember which one. Well, which the first was it? The first anti monitor is in this okay. series. Uh, Supergirl dies in this series. I do believe. Barry Allen, the Flash that we started this presentation with, dies in this series. I think we're series. on Supergirl. Are we on Supergirl? We're talking no, no, no. three or four keys in this now we're on Supergirl. And in the process of the storyline, everything's we're on changed. Flash. Yeah. And the multiple universes are collapsed. It's and the entire DC world changes. Beautiful. They wouldn't do that again. Oh, wait. They do that every. Never mind. But. <laughs> Rebirth is glorious. Rebirth is going very well. We're very pleasant to get along with. We have first appearance of first appearance of Cable. Correct. Right yeah. here. In and 87. Yep. 0.5 CGC. <laughs> and this one is 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 this the 85? This is That's the 85 CGC. We also have a raw in higher grade. Then. We also have a slant higher grade. We do. We do. Uh, we this have all one, kinds of X folks. Uh, just it's just beautiful with the new Deadpool movie coming out Cable is highly featured uh, I've seen the leaked photos well leaked photos of Josh Brolin I mean it, it, it looks it looks good I'm excited the Cable the Deadpool the Domino and the Hope appearances are all rising in price we were we were actually say surprised De by it. Deadpool we were actually surprised by it earlier today when we were looking it's higher than we thought in the last two weeks it's it's yeah, right, uh, ramping up right now because uh, in anticipation of the movie. Yeah, uh, this Deadpool uh, number one. Well, not Deadpool number one. Sorry, first, first appearance of Deadpool mm -hmm. in New Mutants '98. Uh, my my little brother says that you are the master of comic books. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, which I'll take that, but he does not know. <laughs> no, I anyway, so much I don't. Know. Uh, so that being said, have a great night, folks. I have a great coming. Yeah.
Access Vision. Your voice, your community.